first, uh, the last time we saw you, uh, it was about five months ago, mm -hmm. and you spoke at uh, our Lou Lemonworth event. And so I, the first thing I wanted to ask you was, I imagine uh, since that time you've rose to stardom, uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, it was, I, I assumed it was going to be really hard uh, to get in contact with you, but I was still able to get in contact with you by email. I managed to stay humble enough then to, yeah, okay. uh, to stay true to my roots here. Yeah. Yes, you kind of launched me into, into fame. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Therapists are kind of, because of our work, we're kind of, it's like so intimate one-on-one. -on -one. There's yeah. not much room for that sort of stardom, but uh, yes, my Lululemon session was perhaps as close as long as Yeah. Oh, we hope that after this, maybe even it's the next level. Um, but today, kind of just want to set the stage where um, it's really again conversations with counselors and just having conversation, asking a variety of questions, and just um, yeah, just talking about kind of whatever comes to us. So I have some specific questions, but if it goes in a different direction, it'll go in a different direction. Just like any counseling just session. Like, yeah, <laughs> just like yeah, people come in, they think they're you know we're gonna figure this one thing out and. Lo and behold, it ends up going, taking out another direction altogether. That's right? very common. Yeah, that, that is pretty interesting where, again, a lot of times what we think or what we say is the issue or the thing we want to talk about isn't the thing we want. Yeah, you dig a little bit deeper and you realize, oh, wow, this is connected to all sorts of patterns that I have or reflexive ways of, of analyzing a situation. And where does that come from? And that's what, as a counselor, I kind of help try to figure out with somebody. So, you know, where, where, where's the source of that? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, two, before I ask, maybe do a quick lightning round of questions uh, for, um, to kind of, to, for people to learn a bit more about you. I wanted to share that we have these hats out because these are hot off the press. These are our one for one hats. So for every hat we sell, uh, these ones, we pay for a session of counseling. And so, um, this is kind of what started this series too of having conversation, conversations with counselors where, um, you know, for people to see a counselor, to have, uh, to get a sense of like what it's like to be in counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're kind of starting it off with the release of our one for one hats. Cool. What an honor to be uh, the first counselor that you <laughs> kind of have this conversation with. And here in my office here in Vancouver, it's an honor to have you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so if I, so this is where, if I came in for a counseling session with you, this is where we'd be. This is where we would be. This is where we'd be. Yeah. We're a little close here. <laughs> We're a little... Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily be sitting knee to knee with you. Yeah, I'd right. be sitting here in the, on this couch and this is my chair uh, and it would be kind of located a few feet further back. Right. Um, but essentially, yeah, we'd be having this conversation, you and I in this room, uh, in a really intentional way where um, as much as possible, we take away any distractions of the outside world and focus in on what's happening right here, right now. And um, most counselors, including myself, we tend to really rely on the relationship between counselor uh, and client to make something interesting happen. And to, you know, there needs to be a lot of safety in order for big emotions to come up. Right. And that, that safety can't exist without there being a relationship feels good right yeah and i think that's a little bit a part of what we're trying to do here with these conversations of just being able to show a bit of your personality mm -hmm. too and just having yeah. people connect uh even before they come in for a session like oh i just really uh i really appreciated enjoyed anna's vibe or the mm -hmm. things that she also cared about so that it's also trying to even start that relationship before someone even walks in. You know, they've had that connection with you uh, just through um, watching this. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think what you're speaking to is so important. Um, you know, a lot of therapists, ideally, there's, you know, there's therapists who are trained and who've, who've got their letters behind them and who've, who've done a lot of intentional sort of working on how to be present to somebody. But just because you've gone to school and done a lot of work doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a fit for everyone. In right. fact, I, there's no counselor on earth who's a fit for everyone. Right. And so that fit piece, um, it's like a little bit of magic. It's not doesn't it does, it's not formulaic. And right. so it, in in a sense, it's really nice as a 
somebody looking for a therapist to be able to get a little flavor of who the person is. So whether that's on a you know, phone call or, you know, word of mouth is actually really helpful because if, you know, if your friend got a lot of help from someone and you like your friend a lot and you trust them, then maybe there's a kind of, you're going to be inclined already towards that person, but there's all sorts of ways of assessing fit. Uh, and I want to kind of really normalize how important that is for the therapy to go well. Right. And if the fit doesn't, isn't there, probably you're not going to, you're not going to be able to go to the places that you need to go to, to make the therapy work. Um, and so there's no shame in, in doing a bit of kind of shopping around or looking around. Yeah. You brought that up before. And I think it is a really important, uh, thing to mention because I, I think a lot of people don't really realize that. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, um, you know, if you go to a counselor, cause I've heard this or I've gone to a counselor, I've seen someone and it wasn't, you know, it was all right, but it wasn't just, mm -hmm. I didn't have the fit and people think like, Oh, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's it. And, that's it. And, mm -hmm. you, and you, you said that you said at the Lululemon event, mm -hmm. it is kind of like shopping around. If you don't, mm -hmm. if it's not a natural fit, mm -hmm. there's so many other options and possibilities. Yes. Yeah. And give yourself that gift of being patient in that regard. Yeah. It's just like not everybody you meet on the street are you going to want to be friends right. with or yeah. going to want to be lovers with, right? <laughs> right. It's, yeah. uh, you know, and, and you can look on any dating app and sure, there are some elements there that look like you might like um, or that might suit you, but it really takes sort of really being in contact with somebody before you get a sense right. of whether you're going to want to open up to that person or not. So yeah. the same is true for counselors. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick lightning round of five questions. Sure, okay? sure, go we'll ahead. And I'll see if, <laughs> see if I can remember them all. Actually, mm -hmm. I'll just read them all. All right. Uh, so first question, um, where where were you born? I was born here in Vancouver, so okay. St. Paul's Hospital. Yeah. There we go. Just down the street. Uh, if you were forced to watch one sport for the rest <laughs> oh, of God. your life, what would it be? <laughs> <gasps> oh, my gosh. Oh, so this is like... And one of the inner circles of hell for me. So what would be the least painful sport to watch for the rest of my life? Oh, I can't even, I don't even know, Ben. It would have to be something so, um, <laughs> it would have to have something that was entertaining besides the sport itself. So like maybe baseball, cause you could talk to people beside you and it just does its thing. And it does its thing. Yeah. Right. Right. It has to be either like so boring as like baseball <laughs> where you're just like, don't, it doesn't take up much of your energy. Maybe like golf is, or no, no, you know what? It would be like a Tour de France. Tour de, okay. Tour de France. There you go. Perfect. Because the backdrop is so beautiful. There we go. Right. You can just. <laughs> there you go. You can just like admire the countryside. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, what's the best gift you've ever received? Oh, man. Uh, awesome. The best gift I ever received. You're stumping me. I know. That's. Probably lightning round was maybe the wrong. Thing <laughs> As a therapist, I feel like I have to really like process that question. Yeah, check fair. it in with my body, make sure I come up with the right answer. Can you pass and come back. Pass and come back. Pass and come back. Christmas just around the corner. <laughs> uh, at what age do you stop believing in Santa Claus? Oh my goodness, it was very, very early, and I'll tell you, it's a bit of a sad anecdote, and it's, it's exposing of my mother, but I think she can. <laughs> Um, I was maybe four or five pretty early. I think it was kindergarten and I'd woken up early Christmas morning, obnoxiously early and I'm calling out for Santa Claus and I can hear my mother in bed yelling out, he doesn't exist. And being oh so <laughs> left alone with that information. And I, I you know, I, I'm sure to her credit, she didn't know what she was doing to her. So it just seemed so silly that her daughter was looking for Santa and, but uh, maybe not one of her most skilled parenting moments. But yeah, that's that's when the news descended upon me like a ton of bricks. Oh, that is amazing. And yeah, I, I think I remember afterwards. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, you can yeah. you can learn so much about my childhood from yeah, that anecdote alone. Yeah, let's switch here for that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I kind of ruined it for other people in my class. I didn't. It didn't occur to yeah. me that I should keep that a secret. Yeah. Or being like, hey everybody, guess what? Yeah, like <laughs> I have yeah Monday morning. I have news to share. Oh uh, yeah, it didn't go down well. Um, great. Next question. Uh, who is someone that you've always looked up to? Oh my goodness. This is going to be, <sighs> who's somebody I've always looked up to? Yeah, mentor, role model. Okay. I don't know if I can allow you to actually publish this one, but Sarah McLaughlin, <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin who's a local singer here actually. But uh, I think, you know, I was a young teen when I got exposed to her music and there was something about her music that I think, uh, connected to the 
like the emotions that I had no other way of expressing. And so there was some, there was some deep connection there that just kind of happened when I listened to her music. And because I had no words or way of articulating what was going on for me to have something have that kind of direct access without without forcing me to say anything about it, I, I just it was such a gift. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Awesome. We may have to publish that one. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> um, uh, then last, what is one piece of technology you couldn't live without? <laughs> Wait, it's darn phone. Yeah, it's just phone. indispensable. Yeah, that yeah, thing, I'm just on that I thing know. all the time. My poor children are gonna have, Ugh. gonna see me as a phone addict. I know, it's true. I have to work on that. Okay, great. Lightning round over. Okay. Whew. All right. That Lightning was, round that over. <laughs> Want to ask what is um, what is a question you wish people asked more? Hmm. This is gonna sound cliche, but really. How are you doing? How's life? And not in that kind of flippant passing way where I'm expecting a fine, but really I'm making eye contact with you. I'm settling my own energy such that I'm available to you, maybe orienting my body towards you and saying, hey Ben, how are you? And leaving space for you to actually answer. Right. That's what I think I wanted much more of in my earlier life. I would never have known to ask for that. But yeah. That's when somebody really meaningfully uh, asks me that question, I feel really seen. Right. And I feel like I have this option now to to connect and be connected to that, that might help me through a hard time. Yeah, mm -hmm. being intentional with it. Being really intentional. Yeah, right. Um, for someone who's watching this uh, and perhaps feeling down and out mm -hmm. and uh, maybe not even wanting to get out of bed, Yeah. What's 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 something you could say to them or a piece of advice, anything mm -hmm. around that comes up for you? I will say first of all, um, I feel for you and I understand how when you're down or depressed or feeling incredibly anxious, there's an instinct in many of us to isolate, to kind of close ourselves off from the world and keep ourselves in a bit of a, like a cocoon like state. Um, hence why people often can't, you know, leave their houses or they want to stay in bed. And that's a, a form of self preservation that makes a great deal of sense. What I, what I've learned and what I, what I, what I feel to be true is that, that, that same isolation, however, is what exacerbates depression. Um, that what will actually help us get out of that state is, meaningful interaction, connection, being seen, um, uh, and not being alone with our experience. So I would say, do whatever it takes, whatever you can to try and judiciously, not with anybody, but judicious, judiciously um, be connected with and seen by somebody who's not going to judge you, who's not necessarily going to prod you to do this or that, who's actually going to, you know, share space with you, create some space for you, and be curious about your experience. Yeah, it's, I, I could talk about this for a while, because mm -hmm. it is, it is something that, again, it's the last, you know, if you've ever, for anyone who's ever been in that state, it's the last thing you want to do. You yes. just want to be left <laughs> alone. Yes. You just like, yes. and to have, you have to go against, yes. essentially, what's, yes what you're feeling in that moment, yes. you have to, like, it takes yes. forceful action. No yeah. Way. yeah. And it's hard, it's hard to override that instinct to cocoon, to self-preserve. And so I, um, it takes actually quite a bit of courage. Yeah, and I want to say, yeah. like, it is, if I could sort of reach back to my younger self during periods of great depression, I wish I had understood that and, and know that actually connection will help buoy me as opposed to, you know, expose me and sink me. And I think often we feel like, well, if, I'm, if I expose myself in this state, I will be ridiculed, things will get worse. Um, I'll in some way suffer some terrible consequence. And that often comes from lived experience of feeling like somebody you're getting being judged. And so that's why I said earlier, you know, it's important to be judicious. And there are people, uh, not just counselors, you know, counselors ideally do this, but there are people who will reach out and 
and be alongside you without judging you, without needing you to be a particular thing for them. Yeah. Oh, that's, I, you know, holding back on, because I, I'll leave it there, I think. <laughs> it was just interesting because I was listening to a podcast too, and it was about, mm -hmm. in Africa, uh, about training grandmothers. Oh. And it was like, it's this whole program, but it's, it was um, like listening bench. And it was like, you go to the bench and it's with grandmothers and they're, it's, it was really cool. And just again, what you said there of um, the ability to listen non-judgmentally yeah. and just be there and listen yeah. and be seen and be heard. Yes. Yeah. Um, so question, uh, and we've started to ask people this more and more, um, what do you do for your own mental health? Mm. What is it that you do for your own mental health? What keeps you going? And what are those activities or things that you do? So I feel like I can really, I can get kind of detailed and more complex about this, but really what it comes down to are, is the real basics that we hear touted all over the place. Um, for me, for me, sleep is so important. It's hard to come by. I'm not a good sleeper. So I have to do a lot of work to kind of privilege getting enough sleep because that, if that goes then everything else tends to go. You know, making sure I feed myself quite well and, and and then exercise. So those are sort of three pillars. And then the 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 fourth, which is as critical as any of the other ones, is that intentional connecting with somebody, with people. And I you know I have my own therapist and shit, but I have other people as well who do this with me. Um, connecting with people where I I as, as best as I can in that moment share what's true for me, my internal state, what's going on for me, my worries, my anxieties, my truth, my excitement, you know, sharing with them whatever my internal state is um, and having the experience of being, of having that received. Um, and so I've, you know, I've been going to see my own therapist for well over 10 years, but I've, I think I'm, I'm still here because I've found enough people to provide that non-judgmental sort of love for me and it's come in the form of counseling friends partners um, and i feel very fortunate amazing mm -hmm. right yeah i think we may leave it there cool yeah awesome yeah. um well thanks so much anna for kicking off <laughs> uh we, we don't have an official name for it conversations with counselors what did you you said what was the one you just said like it was really simple it was like Oh, meet, meeting, meeting, yeah, meeting, meeting a counselor. Meeting a counselor. Meeting a counselor. Yeah. Meeting a counselor. Yeah. You know, uh, I think it's great that you've kind of come into the office and sort of shown what an office setting can look like. Yeah. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty simple, and I, I really kind of want to tell people who are pers you know who are prospective clients who are looking for a counselor and wondering what that experience is like. It, it's it's normal to feel quite nervous about entering into that relationship because it's a very unusual relationship. Here's somebody you've never met before um, who's going to be asking you really intimate questions about you and potentially witnessing you in a really vulnerable state where you might be, you know, moved to tears or you might expose some part of yourself that you wouldn't expose to most people, especially people you've just met. And so I want to really help normalize people's anxieties around that and to say that usually those anxieties tend to subside after the first session because you really, ideally the counselor has created a safe enough setting um, where you feel like it's okay, this, this isn't going to come back and bite you. Right. And what's beautiful about the counseling relationship is that that person is bound to keep everything you say completely confidential. There are a couple exceptions, but your, your information, your, your, your story is safe with them. Yeah. And what's also really lovely is they don't have a vested interest in how you turn out or the decisions you make. Right. So, you know, things that you might feel ashamed to tell your friend because you're worried that you're going to, they're going to judge you. Um, a counselor's job is to sort of receive it all and to accept you unflinchingly. Right. And, uh, it's rare to have that in life. Yes. Mm -hmm. it is. But and it's I, very important. And to have that time set up and space set up just yeah. Or because there's no like, yeah, I think always that's, you know, so important where you, you know, next week you have time set up in that's the right. calendar that's booked right. for you, for you, just for you. Yeah. yeah. And you have someone who's going to listen and 
ask questions and be there for you. And yeah. you don't have to take care of them. They're there to take care right. of you yeah. for that hour. Yeah. You don't have to ask them about their <laughs> yeah, lives yeah, and take care of their feelings. Passport. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I, I just think that's such a valuable experience. That yeah. It's a gift to give to ourselves. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Sam. It's been a pleasure. It's been a Always pleasure. Always nice to see you, Ben. Yeah. Great. Cool. With that. <laughs>